Hi everyone, in today's tactics video, I'm going to check out three competitive beginner 500 point Ashton Miller Time Army lists. For this, I'll be using the Chapter Approved Arcs of Omen Mission Pack, and we'll factor in secondary objectives that list would give away, um, and also how to steer this list within the game. So a 500 point game is different to those bigger, larger formats. Um, first being most obviously, is a reduced board size being 44 by 30 inches, as opposed to 60 by 44. This means that shooting weapons are in range quicker and melee units will be getting off charges a lot quicker as well. This clearly makes for a quicker game, but also means uh, for turn one, range weapons will be able to shoot the entire board potentially. Uh, but on the flip side, melee units could potentially wrap you up in um, melee quite quickly. Next, a smaller number of units uh, naturally reduces the level of redundancy in an army list. Already hyper elite armies may struggle on this uh, level given they could be fielding only three or four units. So if they lose a couple, they're gonna waste all their other units just sitting on objectives. So a potential opportunity for low cost armies like Ash Militarum is to field multiple units um, and play an attrition game, simply flooding the board and objectives with multiple units. This certainly is an option, however, it would require a new player like yourself to paint up 60 odd infantry uh, models. And actually you would struggle to generate enough damage output from these 60 infantry. Plus also 60 infantry could be decimated quite quickly by some of the other uh, shooting armies and also decimated by some melee hungry armies as well. And lastly, OPSEC units, I'd argue here, are much, much more important in a smaller game. Given casualties will occur, occur a lot quicker, a single OPSEC guardsman could be what flips you an objective, giving you the crucial edge on the points table. Lucky for us, Ashton Militarum now have countless units that can be made OPSEC which is a significant competitive advantage. So let's check out three potential lists and how you play them on the tabletop. I'm gonna look at one that leans into shooting, one that's an all-rounder, and one that looks to outplay that maneuver your opponent. So starting off with the Regimental Doctrine, these will all use born soldiers for auto-wounding sixes to hit and also leadership buff from nearby officers. As you know, there's a host of other options out there um, but nothing simply comes close to what Born Soldiers does with auto-wounding sixes. Transhuman physiology style rules, restricting wound rolls to only hurting on a 4+, plus is relatively common now in 9th edition. So bypassing this completely in the hit roll is huge and really boosts our damage output. Also quickly on the Arcs of Omen Detachment, which allows great flexibility in larger games, but it um, obviously also has to be factored into the 500 point format, so requires a single headquarter unit and either three tro troop, elite, fast attack, heavy support, or Lord of War um, style units, and then a wide array of other units is chosen as well. So the shooty list has a single Cadian Castellan as your headquarter uh, unit with a Warlord trait, superior tactical training, being able to also issue mechanized orders. And he's got a relic power sword called Claw of the Desert Tigers, which is a strength five AP three damage two on six attacks, which is nothing to scoff at. It's then two heavy weapon squads, all equipped with mortars, and a Lehman Russ with battle cannon, heavy bolter and twin heavy flamers, and one other Lehman Russ with executioner plasma cannon, las cannon and twin plasma cannons. This is exactly 500 points on the nose and gives you four command points to start. The idea here is simply to hammer your opponent's units holding the home objective with the mortars that are hitting on fours thanks to the regimental order take aim, and reroll ones are to hit from the Cadian Castellan Superior Officer order, Aura. The auto wounding sixes and strength five mortars, wounding most infantry on a three plus, uh, with a reroll ones to hit, should eat through infantry units in about two or three turns. The battle cannon equipped Lemon Russ would then be your mid table bully, uh, inviting any melee units into engagement range with a bolter and two heavy flamers, would be able to do good work in the um, overwatch phase and also subsequent shooting phases. The executioner plasma cannon equipped one would then be sitting exactly 12 inches away from the Cadian Castellan to receive the mechanized orders, uh, gunners kill on sight, to allow it to reroll ones to hit and supercharge all plasma and delete most uh, non-heavy vehicle units in one round of shooting. You really are going for smash first, ask questions later, trying to table your opponent as soon as possible in order for you to score maximum points in the later stages of the game. Now the natural weakness of this list and approach is that it will suffer from 
what I said earlier being a lack of redundancy model wise and also made worse by limited OPSEC uh, units. The Lehman Russes can be both ordered to be OPSEC from the mechanized order shock and awe, but the, a lack of non-OPSEC infantry is a worry. Also the basic game plan of sitting the mortar squads on the home objective with a caddy and castellan while Lehman Russ move about is fine until one or both of them is destroyed or tagged in melee and are stuck. This would allow enemy units to push onto your home objective and a single OPSEC model could see you losing a home objective. Ways to mitigate this is to ensure the Lehman Russes get early good positioning uh, with fire lanes that cover all angles of the board, meaning the turret weapons can shoot out of melee into all areas, and if worse, um, use the one CP stratagem, Vengeful Salute, to shoot its turret weapon upon death. The Cadian Clastalin um, with the Relic Power Sword would be a last line of defense, and don't forget the Regimental Order, Fixed Bayonets, boosts the Mortar Team's um, attacks to Weapon Skill 3+, plus AP 1, which could take down a single Space Marine, as opposed to Weapon Skill 4 plus AP 0. Okay, next is the All-Rounder list, with the Cadian Command Squad as Headquarter Unit, and the Cadian Commander has the Warlord Trait Spirit Tactical Training with Mechanized Orders once again. He's then got the Relic uh, Death Mask of Olanius for the 4 plus Invol save, and it's then three Cadian uh, Shock Troop Infantry Squads, all with uh, Melter Guns and Auto Guns on the Sergeant. There's then one Scout Sentinel with Plasma Cannon and Chain Saw, and Lehman Russ with Execution of Plasma Cannon, Last Cannon, uh, Plasma Cannons, Armored Tracks, and Hunter Killer Missile. This is exactly 500 points um, on the nose thanks to all the accessories, with you starting on four command points. This list has got more redundancy than the previous, and the Command Squad would sit on the home objective, whilst a Scout Sentinel could be deployed on an objective in no man's land at the beginning of the game. You then got Lemon Rust to receive either Gunner's Kill on sight from the Cadian Commander to supercharge its plasma cannons, or an infantry squad is told to move, move, move onto an objective or any other of the infantry orders to boost their accuracy. If needed, Lemon Rust can still be tagged in melee, as the Spons and Plasma Guns can still find engagement range if they're non supercharged at Strength 7, as this means they don't have the Blast keyword. This list can see you play a more defensive game, maximising your secondary objectives. The secondary and flexible command is very, very easy to score. Both this list and oddly the first list should have um, no trouble easily scoring highly, given the first list only has a caddy and castellan, uh, babysitting the mortar squads, so scoring you two victory points every turn for platoon infantry uh, units being near an officer. Likewise in this list, the Voxcaster um, will cover all platoon infantry units within 24 inches, uh, which means we'll be scoring the two victory points per uh, turn as well. So the next list is one that allows you to outmaneuver your opponent. The headquarter unit is a Cadian command squad, again with the Cadian commander, this time using the relic um, tactical auto recruitability of Tiberius to issue an additional order per turn. It's then two Cadian infantry squads, again with Melter and auto guns on the sergeants, three elite uh, unit types, uh, unit choices, uh, one being three Bolgrims, two with Brute Shields for the 4 plus Invol save and then Bolgrim Mauls, and one with a Slab Shield for a 2 plus Armor save and a Grenadier Gauntlet. Then a Commissar with a Chain Sword and Bolt Pistol, this time with the Relic uh, Death Mask Olanius for the 4 plus Invol save. Then you've got 10 Kazrakan uh, with two Hotshot Volley Guns and two Plasma Guns, with the Sergeant taking the Relic Barbican's Key for the once per game Deep Strike Redeploy and also the additional uh, Doctrine of Herloin Weapons for the plus four inch range. The list is then finished off with a Heavy Weapon Squad, again with Mortars, and exactly 500 points on the nose and starting with three Command Points. So the game plan here is to have the Mortars and Command Squad hold the home objective, whilst the Bolgrims push forward and possibly contested an objective thanks to the Commissar giving them the OPSEC order um, at all costs. The Commissar purposely has a 4 plus invo save to allow him to be a bit more survivable as he supports the Bolgrims. The Kazrakuns here are the main damage dealers and with a 28 inch range which gives you a little bit more reach as compared to the other lists this list hasn't got any long range heavy uh, direct firepower. As you no doubt know by now the Kazrakun mortal wound bomb stratagem combo of ingrained precision and overcharged lad cells can get at a ton of mortal wounds that would chew through pretty much anything these days. 
You can either have them play as a static gun line or use Barbicant's key to deep strike in and destroy a key enemy unit. The two remaining Cadian infantry squads are then there to support the Bulgrims as they contest objectives or go other other objectives or perform actions. Having so many units is a positive in these smaller games as you can easily perform actions uh, per turn if you're managing things right. It will allow you to go for uh, things like retrieve battlefield data or raise the banners high. On the flip side, Cadian infantry squads are admittedly very, very squishy. And on a reduced board size, uh, where fast attack units could be on you very quickly, all these low cost units could disappear in a heartbeat. Into an aggressive, fast moving opponent, focus on destroying their fast movers uh, first and maximizing your secondary objectives. We've spoken about inflexible command, um, but also boots on the ground is actually very, very high scoring. Never forget that reinforcements now are completely free, so an infantry squad could pop up in a table quarter and score your victory point, uh, points over a couple of turns. And likewise, the deep striking Kazrakans will achieve it, given they've also got the platoon infantry keywords. So flashing up the three lists, uh, let's now look at them and review their positives and negatives, uh, so we can make an informed decision if you're wishing to start Ash Militarm Army. So with the shooting list, it does exactly that very well, with tons of direct firepower from Lehman Russ, and six more to choose will do a good work um, into most targets. And the Lehman Russ are very, very durable, and into some opponents, they may struggle to destroy them. However, it does make uh, bring it down a possible choice for your opponent, as four victory points is potentially enough for them to choose at secondary. Uh, given this is a 500 point game, these lower scores on secondaries are naturally expected, but of course this can still push the game um, away from you. As stated before, whilst the Lehman Russ can shoot out of combat, they steal still a vehicle, which can get stuck, would allow other enemy units to go about as they please. And lastly, no units in this list are naturally OPSEC, which could be game losing if your opponent is flooding uh, the board of OPSEC uh, units. The all-rounder has a Scout Sentinel, and its ability to deploy in no man's land could give you an early start to the game. It mixes durability from a Lehman Russ with enough infantry to uh, still move about uh, the board, and doesn't give away any uh, kill-based secondary objectives. Problems with this list is there's no indirect firepower, which is a real point of difference for Ashton Militarum. Three Cadian squads uh, are then required to act as screens and hold the line against enemy threats, and as said earlier, they are fundamentally still very squishy. And perhaps the biggest concern for this list is that you can only issue a single order per turn, as a commander in the command squad can only give one per turn. Right, and the last list has a natural counter charge uh, from the Bulgrims, which slightly addresses a key astronomical time weakness being that we have a lack of fight phase participation. The Kasrakins can get a ton of mortal wounds, which is obviously very, very powerful, and the Barbican's key can get them into a fantastic shooting position. Also, the mortars can babysit the home objective, allowing the command squad if needed to act out accordingly. This list does, however, give away significant points for no prisoners or assassination, actually being seven, not six. Also, the Kazrakan trick uh, can be easily screened by a cutting opponent, so basing a game plan on this can be unreliable. And lastly, in an army known very well for shooting, this list has no hard-hitting long-range firepower. Yes, the Kazrakan will do a significant amount of heavy-hitting work, but shooting at a minimum 36-inch range from a Lehman Russ weapon which means nowhere is safe for your opponent in a board this small. So, yep, uh, what do you think of these lists as a starting point? Let me know what you think. A good thing here is that the majority of these units will show up in larger lists, so little risk of you buying a unit which is good in a smaller game, but no help in a bigger game. So hopefully helpful, and if you want to support me, you can do so with a like, comment, or by subscribing, or joining my Patreon platoon. To keep your bayonet sharp, last gun oiled, favor the Emperor strong, Patreon platoon, sound off. Tank Commander Glenn. Tank Commander Mitchell. Tank Commander Watchdog Van Etten. Colour Sergeant Dupont, Sergeant Broxius, Adal, the Colonel Merrill, Veterans Gibson, Hall, Lundeen, Guardsman Beard, Coquelin, Flint, Hills, Malik, Nitin, Nguyen, Smith, Tom, Tompkin, Conscript Bosson, England, 
Gilliam Goodwin.